Welcome back, calculus students. Mr. Record here, and we are winding down our topic 6.9. Only a couple of videos left. We're going to talk about 9 and 10 here, and I've got a short video to take care of that'll round everything out. But they all have something in common, and they're going to address special kinds of our U substitution uh, technique problems. And this one will involve the definite integral. So let's do some U sub n with our fundamental theorem of calculus friend and the definite integral. So what we've got here is uh, two definite integrals that we're asked to evaluate. And it says, note that there are two ways that you can approach these problems and watch carefully. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate both ways. I'll just use them different colors. So the way that we're going to do these from the outset is going to be no different than what we've done before. We're going to yet let a u value take a hold, and typically that will be a value that's located in parentheses. But moreover, the big thing is we want to pick a u such that its derivative will match the other part of the integral. And that's going to happen here pretty close. Now once we take the derivative of x squared plus 1, yes, we get this 2 times x. We don't really want the 2, and I get that, but we can offset very easily by putting a 1 half in front. And now what will happen is that you essentially have x squared plus 1, which is your u, to the third power, and this x dx is going to fulfill your role as du, Except, yep, there's a 2 that's wrapped up into this, but lo and behold, that 1 half took care of them. Now, what about the boundaries? Well, in my first way here, I'm going to suggest that we try to evaluate the boundaries and change those to use as well. And the way that I do that is I simply take the two values that were already there, and those are x values, and I simply plug them into our x equation, our u equation that is, in terms of x, and we get a brand new boundary. In other words, the boundary of 1 is actually going to take the place or be replaced by 2. And our boundary of 0, if I plug that in and take 0 squared plus 1, I get a boundary of 1. And this will fulfill a new integral. It will have the same value as our previous. Now, the cool thing about this technique is that when we finish this and we integrate u to the third to get u to the fourth over 4, of course, we do not have to back substitute. Pretty cool, huh? In other words, we can just rewrite this as 1 8th, plug our 2 in, we'll have to raise it to the 4th, subtract, plug 1 in, raise it to the 4th, and we end up with basically 16 minus 1, which is 15, all divided by 8 as our answer. Now, what would be the other option? Well, the other option neglects this green step. Instead, we just proceed with what we were doing earlier with our 1 half out in front, our integration of u to the third du. But instead of putting our boundaries here, we just put some temporary placeholders. We could put like question marks there, but I'd like to be maybe a little bit more formal than that. And I'll just put some kind of an arbitrary a and b. It's really important that you don't put 0 and 1 there because you would actually have an integral that's not equivalent to the one that you started with. We'll be able to do something about this a and b in just a moment. So what we're going to do is we'll integrate. We get u to the fourth over 4. And I guess our boundaries would still be a and b at this point. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and back substitute. We're going to change this u back into x squared plus 1 keep it to the fourth power, and at this point you can go back and use the original boundaries of 1 and 0 since your expression is in terms of x. And as you do that, I want you to pay close attention to the fact that you're going to have 1 squared plus 1, which is 2 to the fourth, that would be 16, minus 0 squared plus 1 is 1 to the fourth is 1, and you get that same result of 15 eighths. In fact, you're not really doing anything differently. You're just simply doing something in a different order. That's probably the best way to think about it. 
you're still going to plug in 0 and 1 inside of this expression x squared plus 1. I just did it up here in green for this left side method, and I did it probably right about at this step here for this right side method. Now they're both great. I have a preference over which one I prefer, and we're going to get into that when we move into example part B and example 10. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example 10. What's our u substitution going to be here? Well, it looks like the best candidate would be this 2x minus 1 because it's located in the parentheses there in the denominator. If I take that derivative, I get 2, drop down my or swing over my dx. And I hope at this point you notice that, wait a minute, something is up here. I need to check this x. I need to count for this x, and I don't see an x in this du expression. That should be an indicator that you need to solve your u equal equation for x. Might take a couple of steps if you want. 2x is u plus 1, but eventually x is going to be u plus 1 over 2. Barely just fit it there in that space. Now we can replace that x with their u plus 1 over 2. And while we're at it, we probably realize, I'll write it here off to the side, that our dx is equivalent to du over 2. Now the stage is set to rewrite this integral. So we rewrite it. x becomes u plus 1 divided by 2. This denominator is the square root of u, or u to the 1 half. And our dx is just going to be du over 2, which I can just write kind of on par with this first fraction. It actually wouldn't matter if I wrote the du on this line and the 2 sort of equivalent to that line, because you're going to get the same result either way. I'm just going to elongate my integration symbol there. Now at this point, you can make a decision. Do we want to use our uh, u values, uh, a u equation to change our boundaries? And I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and do that with this problem. So off to the side here, I'll say u of 5 is equivalent to 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 9. And u of 1 is equivalent to 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So now that I've got these boundaries, what that means is that I can stick with u and I never have to go back to an x. But it looks like we've got a little bit of work here to do to get this thing ready to integrate. So what I would suggest is we just multiply by some reciprocals here. So uh, first of all, u plus 1 divided uh, by 2 divided by u to the half essentially just puts that u to the half in the denominator there. This du over 2 that's out here is just going to double up that 2 that's already in the denominator. And so scroll down. I'm going to factor out a 1 fourth. And really, I'm just integrating u plus 1 over u to the half. Now I'm going to see if I can go ahead and simplify this by dividing this time. u divided by u to the half is u to the half. And 1 divided by u to the half is u to the negative half. Finally, we have ourselves in a position that we can do our integration. Took a lot of really good algebra structure, some, some several steps of work, but it's steps that you can certainly do if you practice and be consistent as you work from one skill builder problem to the next. So we're going to bring out our one fourth. Our u to the one half is just u to the three halves. Multiply that by two thirds plus u to the negative half integrates to give us u to the 1 half. Instead of dividing by a half, I'll multiply by 2. And yes, I have boundaries that I change, so I can just work with them and keep our u. Uh, let's go ahead and keep this 1 fourth out in front. What do you say? And then I have 2 thirds times. Well, when you plug 9 in and take 9 to the 3 halves, that's the same thing as the square root of 9, which is 3 cubed, which is a 27. Do the same thing here. The square root of 9 is 3. Now we're all finished with plugging in 9. Now we'll try the same thing with 1. 1 to the 3 halves is just 1, so we just have 2 thirds times 1 plus 
2 times the square root of 1 is just 2. And I suppose we ought to go one more step and really clean this thing up in case this is a multiple choice problem. 2 thirds times 27 is the same thing as 2 times 9 when we do a little reducing there. So that would be an 18 plus a 6 minus, but boy, we weren't so lucky because we're going to get a, a, a fraction here. 2 thirds plus 2 or 2 thirds plus 6 thirds uh, would be the same as 8 thirds. And at this point, not much more we can do, I think. Combine 24 minus 8 thirds. 24 is the same as 72 thirds, I believe. 72 over 3 is our 24. Now it's just an arithmetic nightmare. And 72 minus 8, that would be 64. 4 times 3 is 12. And I suppose we could reduce this by, uh, oh, what? We could take out uh, uh, a 4 and we get 16 over 3. And that's our final answer. This one's definitely a little bit more challenging, a lot going on here, but it is one of our last problems of this particular uh, topic, and I wanted to make sure that we were really getting to the point where we can handle these challenging questions. Now, why? Why is it that I really advocate changing these boundaries? Well, it's really addressed here in this next question. Oftentimes on the AP exam, you will see a multiple choice problem that will assess your ability to understand how to perform U substitution on a definite integral. But the problem won't ask you to find the final answer. Maybe it's a problem very similar to the one that we just did that's pretty difficult. There's a lot of steps to it. We don't want to penalize a student for knowing calculus, but maybe making an algebra or an arithmetic mistake halfway or two thirds of the way through the problem. So you can see by this particular problem, they tell you that they want a certain substitution made on this particular integral. Which of the following integral expressions in terms of u would have the same equivalence. So that's where we're going with this one. So our u is already made for us, so that's nice. And it's probably likely that if this u wasn't given to us, you would have thought to try the same thing. Now, the derivative of x over 2 is 1 half. And if I swing my dx over, I have this. Now, that's not good. <clears throat> because we have this x right here that we haven't accounted for. So we're like, uh-oh, what are we going to do with him? Well, that just means that we're going to slip into full-blown change of variable mode. And I'm going to solve this equation for x, which just really requires to multiply a 2 over. Got it done. And then we'll do the same thing here for this equation, but solve it for dx. Again, multiply a 2 over. Got it done. And now let's see what we have. I have an integration. We'll worry about the boundaries in a bit. I have 1 minus what would be u squared for the top. Remember, u is x over 2. Now the bottom, x, is going to change his name to 2 times u. And our dx right here is equal to 2 times du. Now what that's going to cause is a pair of 2's will cancel. And so we have an integrand of 1 minus u squared over u with respect to u. Well, the problem with that is if we feel pretty confident that we can get rid of choices a and c, both b and d show those, those integrands. But b and d have different boundaries. So to figure out which one's correct, we just figure out what is our new boundaries in terms of u by taking the original 4 and plugging it in for our x. 4 divided by 2, of course, is 2. And at that point, you probably know that the answer's got to be choice D. But let's just figure out what this lower boundary is just for the heck of it. But if we plug in the 2 and we divide 2 by 2, we're going to get 1. And that certainly uh, is consistent with what choice D is. So these are great problems that really assess students' knowledge of this very important skill, but allow the student to kind of get in and out of the problem a little bit faster so that we don't take up too much of their time, but still are able to understand that they know what's going on with the calculus. 
One more example left. We're going to take a look at a very similar kind of substitution that involves a table of values, and then we will put the finale on 6.9. Stick around for that video. As always, thanks for joining.